Could Adam and Eve not have sinned in the garden? Could Adam and Eve not have eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Was that an option? Was that a possibility for them? 99% of the world that believes in that story, I would say, would say yes, they could have chose differently. How is that possible when it was determined beforehand that Jesus Christ would go to the cross for sin? In Acts chapter 4, I believe, 27 and 28. How is it possible for Adam and Eve to choose not to sin when the remedy for sin was slain before Adam and Eve or sin ever entered creation? It was determined that sin will be dealt with before Adam and Eve brought sin into the world, before anything was created. In Acts chapter 4, verse 27 to 28, it is said that God caused, according to his will, beforehand for the Israelites, Herod, Pilate, the nations to crucify and kill his son. He decided beforehand, God did, for this to happen. So those who acted it out, how could they have done anything else if God caused them and planned for them to do it from the very beginning to the point where they have to do it? If God says and destines someone to do something beforehand, they don't have the power not to do that thing. It was written down for Judas in scriptures thousands of years before he was born that he would have to do what he did. Jesus told him to go do it because he had to fulfill scripture, what was written down. That has to happen. And Satan entered into him to ensure that it happened. But there was no doubt that it was going to happen. It couldn't have happened any other way. If God ordains you to do something from before the beginning of time, before creation, before he set the plan in motion, then you do not have a free will to not do that thing. And it's not about being puppets on a string. Judas wasn't a puppet on a string. Caiaphas wasn't a puppet on the string. Pharaoh wasn't a puppet on the string. God doesn't need strings to control people. All he has to do is tweak one little circumstance. He can come in the back door. He can have things happen that we don't even understand that cause us to do certain things. And that's how he controls and knows the future because he planned it. He has us as emotional creatures, anger, pain, joy, happiness, everything that goes into being a human being, not a robot, not a puppet, so that as we move through life and the circumstances that he has placed around us, mixing with our emotions, mixing with our inmost being, that he also knit together, as scripture says. When those things react or are moved or changed or go according to what God plans them to go, that we are going to act in a certain way and react to certain things that happen in our lives. And that's all controlled by God, unless you're going to claim that God doesn't control any circumstances. And ultimately, when you break free will down all the way to its core, you have one of two choices to make. If you think about it for hours upon hours, like many of us have, either God controls everything or he controls nothing. So which is it? If you're going to deny 
God's sovereignty and embrace any part of human free will, at some point you have to say that God is not in control of a circumstance or he's not in control of our inmost being in some way. And if he's not, then that, like a cancer, is going to spread to a knowledge of understanding that God controls nothing. But we know that's not true. God controls every circumstance. Not like a puppet on a string, not like a robot, but as clay as he molds us using our emotions that he gave us. And as we walk through it, we don't feel controlled because we don't know the future. We're ignorant of what's going to happen. And another thing, and I'm getting off topic here, this isn't really what I wanted to talk about, but... I know I've heard it said before um, by Martin, uh, especially that we can't, we're not fatalists. Just because we believe that God is in control of all and He plans the end from the beginning and He works all according to the counsel of His own will, we can't be fatalists. Fatalism is just sitting there, oh, well, I'm just going to do nothing because everything's planned. That's impossible. I, I dare anyone who, who, who claims that to, to try to do that. To try to be a fatalist. How can you be a fatalist? If someone takes a swing at me, I'm going I'm not gonna. Oh, if someone takes a swing at me, oh, oh, all is of God. You know, just punch me in the nose. That's fine. If someone cocks back and swings, I'm gonna. You know, I'm not that quick, but I'm gonna try to get out of the way of it. If I'm walking down the sidewalk and a car veers towards me, I'm not gonna say, oh, all is of God. Now I'm going to try to run and dive into the bushes in what little time I have. Well, that's the same way with everything that happens to us. We're emotional. Even though we understand the concept of the absolute, that God controls everything, if something happens to us in the relative, we get angry, we get happy, we get sad. Because we're human beings. We react to things. So it's in, and that's the way God directs us and has us move through those circumstances that he places around us and they meet with our emotions and our inmost being and that's how we learn and make decisions and, and feel what we're supposed to experience here in this life in order to feel and enjoy the experiences we're going to have when we're called home to God. So it's impossible to be a fatalist, even though we know that God holds the future and planned everything and knows everything that will happen because he planned it before creation itself. Anyway, <clears throat> I wanted initially to talk about a movie that I watched not too long ago based on a suggestion of a brother, Anthony Pierce. Um, and it really was. I'm not a big fan of, you know, top grade actors, uh, what do you call them, the A-list actors um, of Hollywood, because um, they have their own agenda. And by the way, I got another video taken down the other day, for that I, one that I did like a year ago, about um, this and how it's leading into the Mark of the Beast. And, you know, I think I'm, I might have mentioned the VAX at some point, but I, I didn't even think it was that bad. But they didn't give me a strike because they said, I, I, we don't think you meant to to violate our terms, but we're going to take the video down. We're not going to give you a strike. So it's this place that we live in, I mean, it's already been taken over. There's no fight. I mean, it's it's over with. Our country's done. So, you know, like I said, you know, two, three months. Um, either Jesus comes and, and, and gets me, or I'll be dead or in a FEMA camp. One of the two. So, we'll see what happens. Um, again, that's not what I want to talk about. Getting back into this movie. Um, I did like it because it does show contrast. And I kind of, and people who believe in this truth will relate it to God. Um, that's not what the movie was about, but it it is about contrast. It's about a 
some event that happened and out of this chaos um, event a new society sprang up you know interestingly enough that's what's exactly happening in the world today but this new society they wanted to create sameness they wanted to make everybody the same they gave people these injections every morning that took away emotions okay not not the vax so calm down YouTube it's just injections that these people got each day and it took away their emotions their ability to feel and experience certain things it took away color they couldn't see color anymore took away race everyone in the video and the movie I believe was white uh, took away religion um, took away envy anger resentment so that people wouldn't be consumed with hatred anymore because all those things led to being different and if you're a different you can butt heads and cause pain and uh, resentment and crimes occur and that's what they wanted to eliminate but the problem was which they didn't see as a problem when you eliminated all those things you also eliminated love joy faith and all the good things that came with human emotions so you got rid of the bad but you couldn't have the good and they came to that conclusion that you need the bad things in order to know the good things you need to know the good things in order to know the bad things and you couldn't experience either without the other and that's the life they were living so there's one guy in the whole community called the giver that had experiences of evil he had all the memory of evil see they clean the memory of evil so no one even knew about evil no one even knew about hatred about difference about color they knew nothing so everything was just fine no one questioned anything you know they went to bed at you know their curfew time they all lived in um, family units they didn't have uh, actually families they would have birth mothers who gave birth to babies and the babies were assigned to family units uh, because there's no love no family things like that you know babies that didn't you know they were kind of the runt of the litter they were were given a shot and they went to elsewhere and old people would go to get a shot and go to elsewhere it was actually they were killing them but they didn't understand death at all so they just uh, called it elsewhere so these people went to elsewhere but as the giver was giving his memories he was getting older so someone was chosen a child was chosen for him to give his memories the memories of evil to and so as he's given Jonas the memories of all this evil um, there's some good lines in there and I relate this to how God kind of moves us through evil he says at one point when the giver is giving these memories to the boy who's gonna take over for him the boy starts sharing it with the people around him and the chief elder who's played by Meryl Street was upset about this but the giver said that this is an impossible experiment trying to share his training with his classmates and I believe when God was developing the plan to create humanity and give us the greatest experience possible to shape us for the greatest possible joy and revelation of himself that he had to think of a way to give an experience to us that's real and it's an impossible experiment for him to create us perfect and then just tell us oh yeah I could have made evil and you should be grateful and praise me because you have it so great here that would have been an impossible experiment like Jeff Bridges the giver said in this movie you can't do it you can't just tell someone about it knowing something or hearing about it is different than feeling it and experiencing it we have to feel and experience evil as Ecclesiastes 1 13 says this is an experience of evil that God has given to the sons of humanity to humble us by Romans 8 20 we're subject to vanity not by our own choice but by God who subjects us to this vanity 
It's God that created evil and puts us through this experience. We have to feel it. We have to taste it. We have to know the depths of depravity. We have to know the depths of Satan in order to understand the depths of God. And that's what we're, we're going through here. Um, so the movie goes on. I'm going to shorten this because um, I went on too long. But in the ending scene, I'm going to put the ending scene on, on this video here. I'm going a little long here. I'm just going to finish it. Um, but in the ending scene, they come in and they were going to kill this girl by giving her that injection, send her to elsewhere because Jonas, the boy who was receiving the memory of evil from the giver, um, encouraged this girl to not take her injection. So she started to feel love for, for Jonas. So they had to get rid of her. You can't have emotions because love can turn to hate. And that's what the chief elder, Meryl Street, was arguing in this last scene. Because Jeff Bridges, the giver, comes in and says, you don't have to do this when they're going to kill the girl. Um, and she's like, do what? You know, and she says, if you don't like it, then, you know, close your eyes and get out of here. And the giver is saying, if you just understood the possibility of love, with love brings faith and hope. But the chief elder says... How could you say that? How could you want to bring love, faith, and joy back? Because you would have to bring all the evil back as well. You'd have to bring back envy, angry, anger. And the love can turn to resentment. It can turn to hate. It can turn to murder. And you know what? She was right. And she argues that how could you want to bring this stuff back? And she says to the giver, you've seen children starve. You've seen people step on each other's necks just for the view. You've seen people blow each other up just for a simple line in the sand. And yet, she says to the giver, you want to bring all this back? And he says, yes. Because if you just knew love, faith, joy, all these good things that people experience and the contrast based on the bad things you would understand and you would want to have these things. And then Meryl Street says something, the chief elder says something that I think was, was great when you think of it in a deep sense. She says that when you give people the freedom to choose, they choose wrong every single time. And I wouldn't argue with that. But what she doesn't know, and what people who made the movie don't know, is that that's part of it. That's part of God's plan. It's given us the illusion of freedom to move through this life, to make choices, to make mistakes, and to choose wrong. To separate ourselves from God which is ultimately what God has chosen to happen in his creation for us to be separate from. So when we make choices to separate ourselves from God, we are just acting in what God had planned us to do through our emotional and our, and our inmost being. We're just reacting to God's purpose and his plan, not by a free will, but by God manipulating, manipulating our circumstances, our emotions, and our inmost being from before we were even created. And then when God goes through the plan and we are perfected and he becomes all in us, those that have the special salvation and then at the end, all those at the consummation, when God fills every single creature with all that he is, all that evil, pain, and suffering isn't a, just a contrast like in this movie 
between each other in the present day. The evil that we experience is going to be a contrast for an everlasting joy that we're going to have forever with God apart from that evil. We'll have a memory of it, some sort of driving force of it to create a joy that lasts in the future, but that evil and death and sin will be no more based on what Jesus Christ has done. So the contrast is even better. It's not something we're going to have like we have now, where we have some love, we have some hate, we have some joy, we have some pain. All the evil we go through is going to create an everlasting appreciation and understanding of God and a joy for ourselves that we couldn't have understood or understand without going through that evil here on earth. And we know that some people suffer more than others, but every piece of pain produces a corresponding unequal glory as a specific sequel to that pain. Paul says something to the effect that the glory we're going to have is going to be so much greater in comparison to the suffering that we went through in this earth. Well, every pain that each one of us specifically, individually feel and experience will be touched by God to create a joy based specifically on that pain that enhances the joy for all eternity because we went through that here. So the contrast is even a greater thing than it was in this movie or it is in our life in real time. And even the good things that happen to us, even, even the good things that happen to us now in this life is a contrast. Because the good that happens to us now is going to pale in comparison to the good that happens to us when God runs us through this experience and brings every man, woman, and child, every creature, every living, living being that was ever created through Jesus Christ back through the cross so that God will be all in every single one of his creatures. And through that contrast, those creatures will understand the beauty and joy and every good quality of God because they experienced the opposite and they felt the opposite. Now they'll feel the joy because of the death and tombment and resurrection of Jesus Christ.